Hello! Welcome back to BioClass Bytes. In this video, we are going to talk about disaster risk, exposure, and vulnerability. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. So we've described what a disaster is. Now let's go to disaster risk. Okay? So according to Prevention Web, um, this, uh, disaster risk um, is a looking forward concept. Okay? Uh, so this is um, projection of what could po possibly happen. Okay? A disaster risk can be understood as the likelihood or probability of loss of life, injury, uh, destruction, and damage to property resulting from a disaster. Okay? So according to United Nations uh, Disaster Readiness Global Assessment Report, disaster risk is expressed as the likelihood, okay, again, the probability of death, injury, and destruction. Okay? It's widely recognized as the consequence of interaction between a hazard and characteristics that make people and places vulnerable and exposed. Okay? So again, we determine, we compute for the probability of disaster risk by factoring in the hazard, the existing hazard, the exposure and vulnerability of the people to the hazard. Again, we've mentioned this a while ago, there's no such thing as, as disaster. Um, but disasters only, only happen when it follows a natural hazard and you are incapable of addressing the exposure and vulnerability of the people. Okay? No such thing as natural disaster. Um, disaster only happens when there's ex high exposure and high vulnerability to a hazard. Okay? You can check, the, mo check more about this in the link in the description below. So disaster threat and development. Okay? of a country or a community just as development creates disaster risk okay uh, so this has the disaster risk has many characteristics and we will look uh, into them so first we've mentioned this forward looking so disaster risk is forward look looking calculating the loss of life the possible loss of life and damage it's dynamic it can decrease or increase or decrease according to again it can, the risk can increase or decrease according to our ability um, to address exposure and vulnerability of the community. Invisible, it is comprised of not only the threat, but also the frequent low-impact events that, that they often hide. Disaster risk is unevenly distributed around the earth. Okay? Not everyone is exposed to disaster. Not everyone has a disaster risk. It varies according to the, the risk common to them or the hazards common to them. Hazards affect different areas, but the pattern of disaster risk reflects the social construction. Again, we always go back to this. Disaster risk is reflected by the ability to handle exposure and vulnerability of the community. Because the hazards will always be there. But how do we address exposure and vulnerability? That determines the disaster risk. Um, emergent and complex. Many processes, including climate change, this is mentioned again, globalized economic development are creating new and interconnected risks. So we go back to this. Disasters threaten development just as development creates disaster risk. So these are um, uh, case studies of, two, uh, of countries. Uh, for example, the exposure and vulnerability turn, into ha turn a hazard into a disaster for countries such as Haiti, Chile, and Japan, okay? So this is the Haiti earthquake 2010. You can read more about this from Prevention uh, Web. I'll provide the link in the description below. So this is a study, uh, uh, case study. Then another case study, underlying risk drivers accumulate risk in a multiple hazard in Dhaka, Bangladesh. So this one is another case study. I recommend that you watch, uh, you, you read this case study um, I'll provide the link in the description below. So, um, again, overview and clarification of the terms. Oh, a risk is a probability, a likelihood, something you can predict, something you can compute, okay? something you can project, okay? looking forward or forward looking. Um, so, risk is the probability of harmful consequences. Okay? As a result, of natural or human induced hazards in this example the ri th this is the risk there's a mountain here a school here large rocks on top of the mountain what's the risk here 
the risk uh, is those rocks or, or parts of the those land that can undergo landslide or si this side of the mountain that that could have a landslide and then hit the school at the bottom of the mountain that's the risk what's the hazard so mountain top then rock and soil on the, on the on the on this side of the mountain that's the hazard vulnerability are the conditions determined by the physical social economic and, and environmental factors which increase the susceptibility of the community to the impact of the hazards so vulnerability is having a school at the foot of the mountain okay the risk is for them to be crushed by the by the rocks or the or, or to be or to get killed by the by a landslide a possible landslide so that's the risk the hazard is the actual mountain that could undergo exogenic processes or landslide or weathering and erosion vulnerability is the exposure of the school because they are located at the bottom of the mountain okay so the disaster there is in the event of an earthquake or, a, or that could trigger a landslide those rocks could actually crush the people or the students or the school beneath it so that's the disaster the risk is there the hazard is there this is the vulnerability the disaster is the is the result okay of that probability if it happens then that's the disaster i hope that's clear capacities are those positive resources which are helpful to individuals to mitigate or lessen the effect prepare respond and recover from the impact so this is the disaster this is the risk the disaster happened disaster um recovery follows after okay however we should not just focus on recovery we should also look into mitigating lessening the impact adapting to the hazard responding and recovering from the um, hazard okay, are all parts of uh, disaster risk and readiness so the united nations international strategy for disaster reduction put all of this uh, together okay so so i hope th those words are clear okay so risk is uh, exposure to hazard factoring in the the exposure of the people and the vulnerability of the people to the hazard if no one's living here if it's just a regular mountain even if there's an earthquake there will be no disaster because no one living no one's living here just it, it will just be a, a regular geological event but it becomes a disaster when there's a loss of life loss of property or damage to property so still on exposure and vulnerability so we've mentioned that um, disaster risk is dynamic it changes okay and unevenly distributed okay it varies so let's look at these examples so the hazard is earthquake okay and in this example we will be looking at the exposed elements okay um so these for example are are the ones exposed to the hazard so you have a paper cup plastic cup and glass cup okay their vulnerability varies to the hazard okay so in case of paper cup and plastic cup they are considered quite resilient for an earthquake um because you know paper cup even if there's an earthquake and then it falls unless it's crushed okay it's not you know it's lightweight okay the capacity lightweight it does not break upon hitting a hard surface same with plastic cup okay in case of an earthquake if they fall on the ground they're quite resilient they will not break however glass cup on the other hand is brittle it that is its vulnerability it can break okay when it hits a hard surface if it hits a hard surface okay so the other the other thing of that okay is that if it hits a soft surface then it, it is less likely to to uh, to break so this shows us the difference in terms of vulnerability of, of different elements in response to um, the earthquake as a hazard how about the same exposed elements but this time the uh, hazard is fire so paper cup combustible it can burn it's vulnerable to fire plastic cup it can melt when exposed to heat and flames um, and then not flammable not readily flammable glass cup okay it's brittle it cracks it can crack due to suddenly exposed extreme heat not not easily flammable so it varies okay so here 
for fire, the pla paper and plastic cups are no longer resilient. They are now vulnerable to this hazard. So it changes. Then to flood, a paper cup, uh, so hazard, the, the flood is the hazard. So paper cup will eventually disintegrate when prolonged exposure to water. So it has no capacity to release, to, to resist exposure to water. Plastic cups are generally resilient, not, ex, not affected by prolonged exposure. So glass cup, experience, uh, resilient, not affected by prolonged exposure. So in this example, the, the paper cup are now the ones that are vulnerable, while the plastic and glass cups are the ones that are resilient. So how do we apply that in communities? So for example, this community, is, let's assume that it's mostly made up of bricked houses, for example. It means, so we can assume that they have low vulnerability to fire, okay? Because, you know, they, they are made up of heavy materials. But it's possible that they are located near a river or they are in a low-lying valley. So, so they have high vulnerability to flooding, okay? Or we can say that um, this um, community is said, is said to be set on top of a mountain, so they have low vulnerability to floods, but they are made up of possibly light materials, so they have high vulnerability to fire. Okay? So it changes, it, it's dynamic, so it's something that you have to really look for, uh, you have to um, compute for or, or assess for because it varies, there's no definite, um, there's no universal um, universal um, uh, protocol for everyone, it varies based on the uh, exposure and vulnerability of the community. So, so what do we do? Okay, so how do we determine the risk? So if we know the exposure, if we know the vulnerability, how we determine the risk? So these are the things that we can do. Okay? So first is hazard occurrence probability. You compute for the likelihood of experiencing a natural hazard, given your location or region. So you have to quantify hazard probability, okay? And this is something we will learn as we go along. Um, hazard of the probability and the probability of the magnitude of the hazard. You have to look also the, to look into the elements at risk, identify, identify in making an inventory of people in your community that will be most likely affected by a specific hazard. Vulnerability of the elements at risk. So if you have a school, if you have uh, several houses here, or um, if you have a factory here, so what's the vulnerability of those elements? How will they be affected if ever they experience a hazard? Okay, so again, vulnerability is the relationship between the severity of the hazard impact and the degree of damage uh, caused. So what's the severity of the impact? How many could possibly die? How much uh, will be lost? Okay, proper, how much of the property will be lost and all that? So after, you, after a community, or even a family can do this. Okay, you can actually assess your home, the hazard occurrence probability of your home, the elements at risk in your home, and then the vulnerability of the elements. This is something we will learn as we go along in DRRM. So after determining that, you also have to look into the loss management. So this happens in this is this is divided into two, pre and post di um, disaster actions. Pre di disaster loss management. These are the activities that focuses on reducing or mitigating the vulnerability to a specific hazard. If you have um, uh, a house made up of light materials, what can you do to resist, for example, exposure to fire? You can actually convert some of the materials to, to um, heavier, some of the light materials to heavier materials, okay? Um, improving the resistance of physical structures, developing safety plans for the occupants, and all that. So that's before the disaster. Now, should a disaster happen, we also have a post-disaster ma loss management. So how do we cope after? How do we recover? How do we... So how, what will be the support given to the victims? How will we facilitate relief delivery and rapid recovery? So these are the two things that can be done before and after a disaster. So disaster risk, again, is determined by the hazard that's present in the, in the location, in the region, in the area. That could be natural, earthquake, 
rain, rain and storm, natural hazards, or those can be man-made. Man -made. Um, it, it can it can be nuclear hazards or or um, um, results of terrorist uh, attacks or civil disorder. So uh, the hazards are there. Another thing that determines disaster risk would be the exposure. How many people are, are found in that region? Um, how many of them can, can evacuate very fast? How many, of the, how many are the children? How many are the women? How many are the men who can, who can um, react swiftly? Who are the ones who are knowledgeable to, to for example, to, to putting out fires? So that's exposure. Vulnerability is the resistance to um, natural hazards. Okay, can they can they cope? Um, can they can they protect them? Can they protect themselves? Can they react swiftly? Do they know what to do? Do they have early warning systems? Okay, so these three factors determines how big or small the disaster risk uh, will be for for those community. So what is the goal here? Okay, so again, nota uh, growing exposure. Growing exposure, if there are more and more exposure, more and more people are living near the bottom of the mountain, or delays in reducing the vulnerability, we are not protecting them or educating them as much, it only increases the disaster risk of that community. So, so what's the goal? The goal here is to reduce the vulnerability, reduce the level of vulnerability of the people, okay? And to remove them as as much as possible, they remove them away from the hazard because the hazard will always be there. As you can see, the hazard is the one that did not change, okay? It, because it's always there. You cannot stop an earthquake. It, it's, it's there. A volcanic eruption will just happen. It's there. But what we can control is to reduce the vulnerability of the population, protect them, adaptation and mitigation um, um, uh, processes, and to remove them, relocate them, the population and property, farther, as much as possible, farther away from the hazard. That minimizes the disaster risk here. So it's quite big here. After um, lessening the exposure or removing them or relocating them and then reducing the vulnerability, then the disaster risk will also be minimized. So I hope at this point we have already clarified what a disaster is. The factors that affect it and what's disaster risk as well so again this is a disaster is a serious disruption or functioning of a community it includes human material economic and environmental losses and it ex exceeds the ability of the community to cope on their own so that's a disaster now i've mentioned over and over the term hazards i've mentioned natural hazards natural occurring phenomenon or man-made and technological hazards such as accidents or infrastructure failures okay so this is the topic of the next uh, video what are hazards what are natural hazards how how do we know about how do we learn more about it okay so we define it as a dangerous phenomenon human activity or condition that may cause loss of lives and other lives other and others okay so this will be the topic in our next lesson that ends our video. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and like and share this video. Till next time, goodbye!